There's a way shrine here inside the City of Solitude. Let's go ahead and unlock that. Straight down the road. There it is, I see it. Now I'm going to go someplace where I don't have to fight. Where I don't have to travel very far. And uh, where I can just do nothing but grind up my my antiquities. I'm gonna go to Artam. Mm -hmm. Here we are. All right, see all these people scrying? <laughs> so, this is where we start. The scryable item that's here in Artam zone is called the Faded Sigic Folio. Its difficulty is simple, so we're going to scry for it. Now see, the real scrying is not as easy as the sample that they gave us when they gave us, a te when they gave us the tutorial. You actually have six areas that you have to clear out. But you don't have to connect all six together well, you do have to connect all six together, but they don't have to be in a full circle. They can be in an open circle, C-shaped. So we're going to start here. And... I've only got three moves left. I don't think I'm going to make it. One, two, three. Nope. I left one circle. So, one, two, three, four, five. Missing one. What's going to happen is it's going to give me two locations I have to check. And I have to see whether or not which one of them has the actual dig site at it. So we'll start with the one on the coastline. Yeah. And as you can see, if you look at the compass, right here in the middle, you get the antiquarian sign that points you in the direction that you want to go. So you can use that to go over the terrain and find yourself there. And here we are. We're in the area where the scrying needs to be. And now we need to look for that patch of dirt. There's a chest and there's the patch of dirt. Somebody else got the chest. I'll let them. So let's see if this dirt is the dig. Nope. We did get a portable chamber pot. So looking at our map, we need to go to the other area. Another cool thing about our town is the landscape is pretty easy going. There's not a lot of cliffs or anything. And it's so nice not having to fight my way across all the terrain. Although we're going to get to that. Let's see. Here we are. Now, there's a trick. You'll notice a lot of other people are just wandering around looking for the lump of dirt. You don't need to do that. 
open your inventory and go to your quick slots and you'll notice that you have a brand new category called tools and you have your antiquarian's eye you can load that into your quick slot bar and use it as a tool in order to narrow down where the dirt is I'll show you how that works I've selected it on my quick bar and I am going to use it and I get this little glowy ghost thing the tail of the ghost is the direction that I want to look this direction this way oh there's the dirt right on the other side of the wall so we just need to get around this wall and that's how you can find the dirt immediately and directly I just need to figure out how to get up there let's see well not that way There we go. Now is this the dig site? It has to be because there were only two. Here we are. You start with nine augury points. I always start in the middle just because yellow, red, wrong direction, green, and now I'm just going to leave it at that because I know that for a simple container, it's going to be a rectangle, which is going to be two squares by three squares. So it looks like it's the middle. We found the bottom. So we just need to do the top. Now we get a single bonus item for a simple green artifact that we're looking for, antiquity that we're looking for. Again, uh, you notice how this looks green? That's just telling me that I can dig here using this tool. Not having much luck here. Nope, didn't get it. Oh, what's this? So we got the original antiquity called the Faded Sigic Folio and it gave us a new lead, a blue lead called the Warped Scrying Dipper. No bonus loot. and we get this piece of lore. This is from one of the antiquarian circle scholars called Amalian. Is this some kind of sigic folio? At last, a chance to reveal their shrouded mysteries, their hidden truths. Wait, why is it blank? Is this a joke? An unused booklet? An elf tries not to get her hopes up. How depressing. You can view this in the codex. And you'll see that for the green folio, for the, for the green antiquarian thing, there are three people, three scholars who would have something to say on it, which means that you would want to discover it three times. And here is our new discovered um, lead, the warped scrying dipper. However, we can't do it because it's difficulty intermediate and we're still only at difficulty simple. So what do we do?
We can go to all of the regions and in, in the, all the zones and scry for the green objects first. Or we can sit here in our TAM only and just scry for only the same green object over and over again until we level up to unlock the blue item, which is what's recommended for people who are trying to power level antiquities. So let's go ahead and give that a try. The Faded Sigic Folio. We're going to get a lot of these. Darn. Okay. Achievement unlocked scrying initiate. Let's see what that's about, shall we? Go to achievements. Scrying initiate. Use the antiquarian's eye to scry for an antiquity three times. Well, done that. Scholar of the Circle. Complete the Antiquities tutorial. We've done that. Yes, sir. We are scholars now. Once again, you can see that the anti antiquarian symbol is in the middle of my compass. And it's somewhere around here. Where could it be? Where could it be? Where could it be? I don't see it any place obvious. But the terrain here is. Oh, there it is. I didn't even have to use the scrying tool for this. Because the terrain here was so obviously mountainous that there were only a couple places it could have been. Alright, let's dig this up. Wow, okay, so we're far away but not, not completely far away. Let's try here. Red. Let's try here. Yellow. Orange. Oh, we found it. Ta-da! Looks like the top of the box. Yep. So we just need to go down four blocks. There we go. Maybe we'll get the bonus item this time. We found it. What do we get? A mustache wax. Yummy. And apparently we just sit here staring at the thing overnight instead of camping or putting down a sleeping bag or laying our head down or anything. But that's okay because we're dedicated to our work. Alright, scrying has been increased to two. So has excavation. Let's see. Whoops, wrong one. And an achievement unlocked. Yes, we've been able to unlock some things. So let's see. We've unlocked the trowel. 
The trowel is a digging tool in excavation that removes deep but narrow portions of soil and rock while excavating. We've unlocked keen eye for dig sites. The antiquity dig sites will be easier to see when you're 20 meters or closer. I'm going to skip that for now. And under scrying, we've unlocked the scryer's patience. It grants you an additional turn of scrying. We could use that for certain. And coalescence unites a hexagonal cluster of faucets in the antiquarian's eye, converting the symbols to match that of the central faucet. Let's train that. And I'll show you how that works. Okay. So, we've done the beginning portion of this on owl hoots here. To the point where I wanted to show you how to do these things. I'm going to head over to the way shrine and take owl hoots back home and switch over to his freezes over now. Who has already leveled up, I believe, to level four. Here we are. We don't need the bear out. I'm going to put him away. Okay. So, let's look and see. See how we have the warped scrying dipper? We unlocked that on the other character, but it's here now. That means that our leads are account wide, which is really good because if you loot a lead, I don't know if you noticed when we were talking with uh, Verita, she said, we asked her a question. We asked, where can we find leads? She said, anywhere in a bandit's pocket or in a chest. Well, that's true. I actually picked up a lead when I picked up a runestone earlier today, a purple lead. So your other characters will loot leads and you like crafting may not want to train every single one of your characters with 27-ish skill points in scrying in order to be good at scrying. You don't want to have to scry on every single character. so. It's better to have them account wide, and they are. So, um, Hist Freezes Over is level four in excavation and scrying, which means that she has unlocked the ability to scry for blue or AKA intermediate difficulty items. And we're going to do that by scrying for this warped scrying dipper. And I will show you some of the other uh, little tricks that we unlocked in our skill tree. One of them is called the coalescence. This is the one where it says it unites a hexagonal cluster of faucets in the antiquarian's eye. Let's click on that and see what it does. It will take whatever the center, the center selected character is and transfer in a circle around it, all the other characters just like it. So if I went here or here, Or here this is even better I could transfer all of these items into this little star shape and look I just solidified this whole section here now that isn't clicked you have to click it but we just made a really big dent in what we were doing Now this is called dilation. I haven't really, I haven't really dialed this in in my brain how it works. It says it claims all faucets of the selected type that touch your area of control. 
as well as matching faucets directly adjacent. So if we click on it, it does this. This does none, none, none. Would this connect anything that isn't already connected? No, it wouldn't. Would this? No. I guess what it does is it lets us, it lets us check a whole bunch of them all at once. So like if I did this one, it wouldn't really help much. See, I don't see anything that gets me closer to these two circles up here at the top. So I'm not going to use that. I have, I can't read a number, but I have at least three more select, three more bytes here. The other thing to know about is you have magic up here that is used by doing the coalescence, by, by doing these, these special skills up here. And that's in these gems. So if I use this, I just used up one of my gems of magic. Okay, now I know that I have three moves left. One, two, and we're done. Sometimes when you click on the scrying tool, you'll go, where is it? Where is it? You've got to look around, around you. Okay, so it's going this way. There it is. And we got a Nern root. Now, the intermediate, the blue, has another layer of stuff on top. And you'll notice that the scrying tool cannot scry through this many layers. That's why this is a red square. It can scry through the, the big rocks, but it can't scry through the surface sand. So, our scrying limit area is limited to where these big rocks are. Let's try here. Oh, hey. Okay. All right, we hit it. Now I have some other tools that are unlocked here that I didn't have unlocked before. This is the trowel. It removes a deep but narrow portion of soil and rock while exca excavating. Now the trowel has an energy bar, and that energy bar has to be filled up before you can use it. This is the heavy shovel. It removes a layer of dirt and rocks within a large area. Now the shovel only removes a single contiguous height of dirt and rocks. So it would remove this layer here, this layer here but it only removes one layer at a time. So it wouldn't remove the big pebbles underneath. It would only remove the surface sand. And I can't use it because it doesn't have energy yet. So I have to start gaining energy by using the hand brush first. So we use the hand brush, one click, two clicks, fills up the energy bar for the trowel or shovel. The energy bar can only be used for either the trowel or the shovel. So let's just say I grab the trowel. The trowel will go through two levels of dirt. I just unlocked part of it. Remember, we only have a certain amount of health for our digging site and for our eye object. If you dig too deep, you could damage the thing that you're actually trying to dig up. 
So you have to watch this health bar and you have to make sure to use the right tool for the right number of levels of dirt. Now that I've used the trowel, I've used up the energy bar, I can go back to the hand brush. The shape of the item that we have now on the intermediate antiquity is different. It's no longer a rectangle box, it's a pouch. So the shape that we have to unearth is no longer two by three, it's two by two plus one. So that's another thing that you have to factor into when you're trying to dig out this pouch is what the shape of the pouch is. You want to try to determine which direction it's facing so that you can figure out where its little knobby plus one part is, the um, gathered top of the pouches. Now see, for an intermediate, I can unlock two bonus items and I have 11 hours, 24 minutes left. Scrying will not find bonus items, just in case you wanted to know that. So I'm going to use the hand brush just to fill up my, my shovel. And I'm going to use my shovel and dig through a huge portion of sand. And hand brush. And shovel. It appears that the shovel can't go through this surface dirt. Tom. Hey, we found two items all at once. And we've unlocked the purple lead. So you get, in every zone, you get three free leads. You get a green lead, a blue lead, and a purple lead. We unlocked a canteen cozy and a rubedo leather helmet. Very nice. Now, 
I've only found the faded, the faded Sigic Folio twice, and if you view it in Codex, let's see, F to view in Codex, two out of three times. I've got a letter from Amalia and a letter from Verita. I want to get the other one from Amalia. So let's go back to Scryable and let's scry for this one. And I'll show you my technique for the easier level scry items. Hey! This is uh, green, so it's only got three levels of dirt. It's got light dirt, pebbly dirt, and then rocks on top. We're going to auger first. Hmm. There we go. And I'm going to use the trowel on the rocks. And that, on the rocks, it digs down three levels, two levels. So I can get down there immediately with one hit. So I go to the light pebbly area, one and two. I go to the trowel and one. Go to the light pebbly area, one and two. Go to the trowel and one. There we go. So now we have all three messages for this antiquity. We can view them in the codex one after another. From Amalian. Is this some kind of Sigic folio? At last, a chance to reveal their shrouded mysteries, their hidden truths. Wait, why is it blank? Is this a joke? An unused booklet? An elf tries not to get her hopes up. How depressing. From Verita. Giving up so soon? That's hardly the Amalian I know. Look closer, just there, near the spine and along the edges. See those glyphs? Barely visible to the eye. This book may have played a role in secret Sigic correspondence. From Amalian. Of course, a group as powerful and secretive as the Sigic Order wouldn't just set ink to parchment like some common mage. I only wonder how they managed to make these markings. A magic plume, or do they simply will the glyphs into being? And that's the full history of the faded Sigic Folio by discovering it three times. The right master's sleep is advanced and let's just double check. We're not even close to five and I'm not sure when we unlock the next one. Let's see. Um, Yep, next one unlocks at rank 5. We're halfway there, a little bit less than halfway there, 18 out of 40. Or I could do, go back and forth and do a blue box and then do a green box to get another blue box and then do a green box to get another blue box and so forth, which is what we're going to do to try to level up. So.